You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. and breakdown and interviews so to start us in we like to do what we always do thank you guys for joining us today on the television post game report so it's a round of applause for you and we'll delve right into it first and foremost the, the pelicans have been uh, what i would consider i call them the kings of midgard for those marvel and superhero fans out there that knows what that thinking the kings of Midgard, meaning that they're the kings of the realm that they habitate, but that's not, this is actually a play on words. Kings of Midgard in terms of king of the middle, meaning the Midland kings, meaning the team that can't seem to break away from the irresistible gravity of 500. We'll get one or two games above it, and then gravity will snatch us crashing back down to uh, this realm, this mediocre 500 realm that we seemed seem as a team to not be able to break free from. So we are right now, currently the Pelicans are trapped within that dysfunctional gravity, not being able to consistently put together a string of wins to move them substantially ahead of their losses. Currently, they sit at 20 and 19, of course, they just faced off against the Detroit Pistons. We'll do the Pistons game first, and then we'll uh, then recap the Minnesota Timberwolf game in the second segment of the show. This is a 40-minute podcast, and and uh, before we get started, the Pelicans were able to do something splendid the other day. Last night, they were able to take the win against the Detroit Pistons. Now, the Detroit Pistons do have a series of injuries that they're dealing with. Some of their key offensive personnel wasn't readily available for this game, but they did quite make they did make it an interesting game. Of course, Anthony Davis went down with a what appeared to be an ankle injury. Although I just seen a, a report from Pelican.com that said that the injury they, they did MRI on him. It turned out negative, and Coach L. Gentry believes that it's just simply sore, according to his words. And it's very doubtful that he will lace him up to play against the Memphis. Grizzlies, that's the bad news. The good news is that we have another splendid top ranked big who woke up out of his massive slumber and was able to literally uh, take over the game to get this, the Pelicans, the 112, the 109 win in the game. So before I get into any more breakdowns, let's hear what Coach L. Gentry has to say about what happened in this Here's Pistons game. Exciting Here's one at that. Awfully exciting. <laughs> Yeah, it was. You know, we uh, we kept getting separation, but we couldn't really close it out. You know, they kept coming back and making shots and, uh, you know, the offensive rebounds. But I thought we played great. I thought we did a good job of moving the basketball. I thought defensively we were really solid. Uh, you know, they just did a good job of just fight, finding a way to fight and stay in the game. But I thought we were great at the end, and I thought Rondo made a couple of really big plays. I thought each one made big plays for us, and then obviously Demarcus made a couple of really big plays for us. Coach, what got Demarcus started tonight? He was kind of I don't want to say sluggish most of the night, and then bang, he really lifts you guys. In no, the he, he wasn't really sluggish. You got to go back and look. Every time he put the ball down, they ran, you know, one or two guys at him. You know, they didn't think that their big guy could keep him in front, and so every time he put the ball down, they ran someone at him. But uh, 
we started moving guys and tried to get him in space where he was on the move. I thought he did a great job. You know, I really did. Coach, after Davis goes down with the injury, it's a 9-0 Detroit run. Did you change something, say something, try and spark something to get them back in line again? No, I mean, I just think they did it on their own, really. I mean, uh, you know, we had some good shots at the basket. Now, we had a couple of turnovers, but we had great shots at the basket that didn't go in. And uh, our whole thing tonight was that we weren't going to worry about the missed shots, that we were going to keep playing and try to play through all of that stuff because, uh, you know, we're going to have some of those, uh, you know, driving to the basket and not being able to finish or finishing and just not having the ball go in. But I thought we did a great job of just moving on to the next play. And, you know, we ended up with 31 assists on 40, 46 baskets. So, you know, once again, I thought we did a great job of moving the basketball. Coach, did you talk to Anthony after the game? And, and how is his ankle? Anyone to tell at this point? Don't know yet. Don't know yet. It's just, you know, I hadn't really had enough time to talk to the doctors or talk to the trainers. So when this is over, I'll go back in and talk to him and see. You got the energy you wanted coming out of both locker rooms, you know, halftime and to start the game. Does that feel like that message kind of sank in? Yeah, I think so. You know, I hope so. But uh, I thought we started the game with great energy. You know, even a couple of the turnovers we had, it was like in in the open court pushing the basketball. So I just thought that uh, as long as we could play that, I thought Rondo did a great job tonight. I really did. I thought he did a, a, a really good job of keeping the pace of the game where we want it and uh, getting guys shots and doing a really good job in that department. When Rondo gets going like that in the first quarter, what does that do for the rest of your team? And for him to close out with those layups, does that kind of show what kind of pedigree that guy has? Well, it does. And, and uh, we wanted him to be a little more aggressive. Sometimes I think he, he's looking to pass the ball too mu uh, a little bit too much. And I thought tonight he uh, did a great job of passing, but I also thought he did a great job of taking opportunities when he could to drive the ball to the basket. I think you guys outshot them pretty significantly tonight when it came down to the end. Were there areas in which they clawed back points from you guys? Where did you kind of see the, the... Well, they were just good. They made timely shots more so than anything. And, uh, you know, I thought Avery Bradley, you know, we did a good job on him. He ends up shooting 10 for 23. So, you know, we'll take that night in and night out. But he made some timely shots. And, uh, you know, they do a good job. they got four guys that shoot 40%, so they spread you out. And they got drum and roll into the basket. So you almost got to pick your poison. And we try to do a little bit of both, be able to bump and tag and then get back out. And sometimes we just just weren't able to do it. Alvin, did you tell your guys to, to, to foul on Detroit's last possession? And then when Bradley got such a quick catch in the corner, were you fearful that you would, that one of your guys might foul a three-point No, chance? no, no. We had already talked about that. We said when the ball leaves and it's in the air, we can make a foul. We'll do that. Uh, if not, and it was Rondo, and he's, he's smart enough to understand that. After he caught it in the corner right there, uh, the only thing we could do is try to challenge the shot and not really take a foul on that one because it would have been a shooting foul. Well, Coach, here's to a win and an exciting one at that. Awfully exciting. Coach yeah, L. Gentry, you know, we, uh, you know, hamming it up, talking about uh, the – Situations going on with the uh, Pelicans in that win, and uh, as you hear the reporter ask him about that last uh, challenge by Rajon Rondo. But looking at some of the statistics dealing with this game, the Pelicans shot fifty six percent from the field. That's just excellent on the night versus Detroit's forty four percent. Downtown wasn't as good. They shot twenty seven percent versus Detroit's thirty percent, which really was concerning to me about the Pelicans. Uh, uh, the Pelicans win here. They actually won this game a lot by a lot more. Of course, they were uh, 67 percent from the free throw line, 14 of 21 in the game versus Detroit's 86 uh, percent. They continued to kind of make things uh, close. They won the total rebound war 52 uh, to 46 and uh, kept that assist streak going 31 to 22 in the contest. They had 18 turnovers for 18 points. So they continue to turn over the ball, but with that high turnover ratio, they were still able to eke out the win because of fast break points in part 30, 30 points to 15 and points in the paint where they just simply dominated Detroit 68 to 50 in that category. If you look at some of the statistics dealing in the box score, dealing with, with the Pelicans were able to put up Anthony Davis in 27 minutes, had 30 points and 10 rebounds. He was on his way to a monster game before he had the injury in the third quarter that took him out for the rest of the game. When he went up high to get a rebound, I mean, when he went up high to uh, make a shot and he collided with Avery uh, Bradley 
and in air. And I think they might have their ankles uh, might have bumped and he came down grimacing in pain. And eventually he limped off of the court and never came back. Like I said earlier, uh, they did an MRI, found out it was negative, And it just seems like uh, Coach Gentry said it wasn't any structural damage. It just seems like it's sore. So they just might bench him. Uh, keep just for safety reasons against Memphis, which they should need Anthony Davis against Memphis, being that Memphis has basically fell uh, falling through the floor. A uh, whole new coaching personnel change and all kind of stuff going on, so they shouldn't need him. Shouldn't. But he finished with 30 points and 10 rebounds and 27 minutes of action. Big ups to Anthony Davis on that score. What happened after that was simply more uh, miraculous in terms of DeMarcus Cousins really came alive. He came alive to help steady the ship. He had 20 points in 40 minutes, 10 rebounds. He finished up on the night. 23 points for me, Twine Moore, who looked really good shooting the ball. 11 from 14 from the field. Finished with 23 points on the night. Drew Holiday. Uh, had a, played a lot of minutes, 44 minutes, had uh, 14 points. And Rajon Rondo was a little bit more aggressive with 12 points, 15 assists. Now, if if they can get that from Rajon Rondo, we, and me and uh, the team talked about it before here on the Pelican Post Game Report, is that if Rajon Rondo can score uh, something like maybe 10 or 12 points a game and give him 10 assists a game, maybe 12 and 10, I heard DC said, even give him 14 and 10. I say 12 and 10 is a good mark for Ray John Rondo. If he can average 12 and 10 a night, that'll help significantly, significantly on the scoring load versus these other teams big time. Cause he can really steady the shit. You know, the ship most of the times he'll have situations where he'll play. Well, he'll just be an assist man. He needs to start being more aggressive when he gets those looks as well and penetrate and get into the basket. And he did that against Detroit. A little information on that Detroit matchup. New Orleans scored 68 points in the paint. Like I said, 20 of the Pelicans' first 24 points came in the paint, inside the paint. New Orleans outscored Detroit on the fast break, 30 to 15. Rondo scored nine of his 15 assists in the first quarter, tying a franchise mark for assists in a quarter set by Chris Paul. So Rondo continues to re- rewrite the assist books in uh, New Orleans. Leading 63 to 60 with 10:28 remaining in the third quarter, New Orleans went on a 13 to 2 run to take a 76 to 62 lead with seven minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the time in the time frame. While the Pelicans unanswered, excuse me, while the Pelicans leading 81-71 with four minutes and 44 min, uh, seconds remaining in the third, Anthony Davis exited the game suffering a right knee ankle uh, right ankle injury upon Davis exits the Pistons scored nine unanswered points and closed the time frame against the Pelicans on a 13-5 to cut the deficit to just two points 86 to 84 heading into the final quarter New Orleans built an eight point advantage in the fourth quarter thanks to in part by DeMarcus Cousins 15 uh, 15 of his 20 points coming in that time in that time final time frame Trailing 103 to 95, Detroit did score eight unanswered points. To tie the game, which is two minutes remaining in regulation, New Orleans was able to claim the win with help from Rajon Rondo, who connected on two layups down the stretch to keep the contest a two possession game. So Rondo took full advantage of the opportunity as the Pelicans went on to win the game 112 to 109. So. Like I said, it was a nice win by the Pelicans. Big win, a quality win, because Detroit's not a garbage time opponent. Let's just get that straight. But let's hear what DeMarcus Cousins had to say as he helped the team uh, claim the win. Um, You know, everybody's aware that AD went down, and, uh, you know, he was kind of a hot hand for us early on in the game. So, uh, you know, with that being said, somebody had to pick up the slack, so uh, I just tried to become a lot more aggressive. Get this win and kind of spit the taste of the Timberwolves game out? Uh, it was very important. Um, not even just the Timberwolves, you know, two before that as well. So, uh, you know, it feels good to get back on the on the winning side of things and uh, hopefully we can carry this game into the next one. Have you gotten a chance to talk to Anthony? I mean, what, what kind of happened? You saw him come down? And... Well, I actually saw it when it happened. Um, he, landed, he landed pretty awkward. Uh, you know, he says about him right now. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully, it's feeling better tomorrow. I don't really, I'm not really a doctor, so I can't give <laughs> the answer y'all looking for. So is there, uh, like a Hopefully, he's day to day. So is there like a conversation y'all have on the sideline once you see him go to the locker room? Is there anything y'all say to each other, anything like that? No. Nah. I mean, 
It's pretty. It's like common sense, I believe. Um, somebody had to pick up the shot. You described it as having your head in the clouds. Any idea why? Um, you know, I let some bad calls get to me early. Uh, you know, you know, I was just kind of out of a rhythm with you know being out and then coming back in. My minutes were kind of up and down, so uh, I was just kind of out of rhythm. Uh, when he's pushing the pace. That's DeMarcus Cousins chiming in, give you a little information on the game. We're going into our first break when we come out, we're going to continue to break down. Close out the last remaining thoughts on the, De thoughts on the Detroit game. Recap the Minnesota game and get you teed up with the Memphis preview. All that on the other side of the break, you're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G-Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. This podcast 131 covering the Pelicans win over the Detroit Pistons 112 and 109. We'll finish out that Demarcus the Demarcus Cousins interview. And of course, we'll then get into the Minnesota Timberwolf matchup that happened a few days ago. We'll recap that game and then toward the end of the segment, we'll preview the Pels as they get ready to take on the Memphis Grizzlies. So all that is on the menu here. I'm Big Q once again, and we're going to get right back in that DeMarcus yeah, car, uh, yeah, yeah, my minutes were Cousins. Kind of up and down, so uh, I was just kind of out of rhythm. Is there any example of just how much of a difference Rondo can make, you know, when he's distributing, when he's attacking? Uh, when he's pushing the pace and, you know, finding guys, you're getting up and down running with a tough team to beat. And, uh, you know, I think that's the pace we played at tonight. I think that's the, uh, the pace that he really excels in, and um, he really becomes, you know, Rajon Rondo. So, um, you know, with that being, well, Rajon, as he said. But, um, <laughs> that being said, um, you know, I mean, y'all, y'all have seen it time and time again. Uh, still got it. And how big was uh, Etron scoring as well? Oh man, um, you know, he's hit some. Excuse me. <laughs> Run, big boy, run! (laughs) (laughs) 
Always a D-line to catch my kids. Yeah, get scared. Yeah. I know you haven't seen much of this Oh, my big boy time. My big boy time. Can you guess to analyze what you're seeing on there? We about to make this run. <laughs> I, I just started my second game. <laughs> run, big boy. They can't handle this stage, man. They ain't ready for this. Yeah, big boy. All right. Hold on. Make something happen, youngin. Make something happen, youngin. Make something happen, youngin. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Ooh, he got some grit. That's the box. Wow. <laughs> he kind of started watching the championship game, uh, the college football championship game last night as Alabama took it over Georgia in an exciting, uh, exciting overtime classic. A lot of people don't like Bam out there, but obviously DeMarcus Cousins is an Alabama fan. So uh, getting to the next, the nit and gritty, uh, getting to the next game against Minnesota. The Pelicans, uh, of course, stumbled pretty good against the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is the third meeting that they had to face off against the Timberwolves. And they have not been able to beat this team this year. Last year, they just beat the hell out of them uh, profusely (laughs) this year. They've struggled mightily against the Timberwolves uh, to do anything with them. They've lost uh, all three current matchups against against Timberwolves. They face uh, one more matchup in, later on in the season against this team. And it since the upgrades that this uh, the Timberwolves have brought in with Taj Gibson and and the really big one is Jimmy Butler, who I call the Pelican Killer. He was one of those guys that just, you, you know, he you can play tough defense on him as best you could. He, he's still going to knock down uh, shots while covered. And that's just the skill that he has. In this game, Minnesota were able to take it from the Pelicans in huge fashion. They beat him by 18, and they really made him look bad in this game. Um, really look bad in this game. If you take a look at some of the statistics that was dealing with the the this win was the fact that the Pelicans – Shot uh forty two percent on a night while Minnesota was at forty nine percent. Then they shot six of twenty nine from downtown for a horrible twenty one percent. While Memphis shot fifty percent, but they did hit all hit <laughs> they free throws twenty six to twenty eight for ninety three percent from the line. So that was a big ups. But they also lost the, the rebound battle fifty one to forty four to the Timberwolves. They even lost the assist war 26 to 20. They also, they turned the ball over 16 times, giving spotting Timberwolves 17 points off of those turnovers. They were uh, lost the fast break war 14 to seven. And uh, if that don't float your boat, they lost the points in the paint battle 60 to 48. So they continue to, they, they just wasn't in this game. And I watched this game. I was like, wow. And, you know, they basically started the game off. They spotted them a 12 point uh, advantage by the end of the first quarter. Then they continued to play uh, Toxie Turby in this entire game. And by the time it came around to the the, uh, fourth quarter, the game was basically over with Anthony Davis. uh, Seemed kind of lethargic in his game is the best word. This overall team performance was 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 uh, lethargic. That that's pretty much what I seen in. Uh, that's the term. If somebody was asked, Big Q, how would you describe the Pelicans play in this game against the Minnesota Timberwolves? I would say lethargic because that's exactly what it was. It was lethargic. They were tired looking. They didn't look like they had no energy. They just looked like they was just going through the motions. Anthony Davis finished with uh, 16 points, nine rebounds, a very pedestrian 16 points and nine rebounds in 36 minutes of play. Very pedestrian for uh, Anthony Davis standards. Maybe that's that's a career day or a big day for one of those bench guys like a Sheik Diallo or somebody like that. But Anthony Davis, man, he got to do better than that. And he's usually the stir that's that that uh, the, the straw that stirs the drink pretty much 23 points for DeMarcus Cousins in 39 minutes. He had 15 rebounds, but seven turnovers. He just turns the ball over a lot, man. Looking at DeMarcus Cousins trying to make plays happen. 13 points for Drew Holiday in 33 minutes. He was old for six from downtown. I don't know what's going on with Drew. 
But Etwan Moore called it, whatever it was in this game. He was he had eight points, three of nine shooting, 0 for 4. So both those guys were 0 for 10 from downtown shooting the ball. Yeah, had Anthony Davis in there. They were 0 for 11 because they did miss one as well from downtown. They just didn't have it. Two bench guys, Sheik Diallo and Darius Miller, finished with nine points as the Timberwolves took it. Top score for them was, of course, 21 for Jimmy Butler. He had 21 points and eight assists, seven rebounds. Big game for him. 20 points for, my, uh, for Wiggins, 15 for Todd Gibson. But Big Cat was another guy that turned it on, who struggled in the two previous contests. Big Cat turned it on this one. He had 21 points, 16 rebounds in this contest. And uh, Big Cat really turned it on in this game against DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis. Here is Elvin Gentry's take on what happened after the game. Oh, we weren't ready to play. We weren't ready to play. And, uh, you know, that's my fault. I got to get everybody ready to play. But, you know, they beat us in all phases of the game. You know, they were quicker. They uh, were better defensively. They were into the ball. Uh, they got the 50-50 balls. Uh, so we just, you know, they beat us in all phases of the game. Coach, if you hit shots early, does it change the way that that looks? Or were the missed shots a result of what you're referring to? Well, uh, maybe, but we can't give a team that scored 84 points. That really 81, because they made a three at the end of the game last night. Uh, we can't give a team, you know, 70 points in the first half that had 81 for the game. And so that's where I think we just dug ourselves too deep of a hole. Uh, you know, we, we turned the ball over early, uh, which is the one thing that we said we couldn't do. And we just we, we didn't play very good. And that's the bottom line. I mean, you know, we can talk about a lot of things, but we just didn't play well. We didn't make shots. You know, we had open shots that we didn't make. And we were taking the ball out of the basket. You can't run when you're taking the ball out of the basket. Was there a moment, at least in the game, where you thought it could, it could change? Uh, not until really the fourth quarter when we had a little run there. But... Once again, when you're down that much, you know, everything has to be perfect and 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 we weren't gonna be perfect. So, you know, when we met when we built any kind of little run or anything, all they had to do was score a basket in you know, in some situations or some way and then all of a sudden, you know, we're back to square one again. How surprised are you about that start considering you guys had a couple of days there? And they're coming off the back-to-back. I told you, I don't think that matters. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. You know, if you're a good team, you come and you play. You know, the back-to-back and all of that stuff, four and five nights and all of that, doesn't mean anything. If you're a good team, you find a way. That's Coach L. Gentry. If you're a good team, you find a way. That's really excellent point by Coach L. Gentry. If you're a good team, you find a way. And with that mentality, I'm going to give a little, I must pull back from the picture and look forward at what it looks like over a four game clip. But first, here's some information on that Detroit, um, excuse me, on that Minnesota Timberwolf 116 to 98, 18 point thrashing that the Tim, that the Pelicans received by Minnesota, who did, they just devastated this team last year. They beat them in all phases. This year, they cannot touch them. Uh, Minnesota secured a wide to wide victory opening the game on the 11 to three run, which is what coach Gentry led to and led as many by 34 points during the game. The Timberwolves scored 60 of their points in the paint, including 34 in the first half. Andrew Wiggins added 20 points for Minnesota. Davis was held to just 16. That's Anthony Davis for the Pelicans while Drew Holiday was held to 13 points. Drew Holiday held himself to 13 points. Shooting no for six from downtown. If you shot in on attack the basket to get to the free throw line, please, Drew. Demarcus Cousins, uh, seven. Drew Holiday had three. Ray John Rondo, three, accounted for 13 of the Pelicans' 16 turnovers. Demarcus Cousins, man, continue to hold that indubious title. New Orleans was held to just six of 29, which is basically 21% shooting from the three point line, while Minnesota was, fe- was nine of 18, which is Pretty much 50% from downtown. And uh, that's it. I mean, there's nothing more to get to in this game. Coach L. Gentry summed it up. He said that this team beat them from wire to wire. They destroyed them and beat them in every phase of the game. The team didn't show up to play. And they really wasn't. They wasn't enthused. They was just going through the motions. And it, it was just easy to just to see that. And that's, like I said, I don't listen to the interviews before I play them for you. I listen to him after it because I like to give a fresh opinion, a fresh take on what's going on. So looking at the last four games before I preview this 
Memphis Grizzly game against the Grizzlies. The Pelicans faced off against the, their last four opponents. Just going over the last four was the Knicks, the Jazz, the Timberwolves, and the Pistons. And this is what it looks like. They face the Knicks. They lose to the Knicks at home, 105 to 103. Of course, we know what happened, and we broke that down in the previous podcast. If you want to hear my breakdown on that, go back and listen to the the Knicks and uh, Pelican recap, uh, and you'll hear my breakdown on that game. Same with the Jazz. The Jazz, they were able to beat the Jazz 108 to 98 by 10. Okay, so they back up. All right. They faced off against Minnesota, destroyed by 18, 116 and 98. They come back home. They face off against the Detroit Pistons. They beat them by three. It's uh, now why I did that to do this to show you that that was the last four games. They win one, they lose one. They win one, they lose one. This is what this team has been doing. Now, occasionally they'll win two games, and then one time they won three. They've never gotten above that mark for the for the season right now. We're now in early January of 2018, so we can't we can say now that they're still learning to play with each other. That was something you could have said. When November, December, we're in January now. We're supposed to have the groundwork done. They played enough games with Rondo, healthy. They played enough games with Etwan Moore. They know what they're going to get with Anthony Davis and Demarcus Cousins. And I still see a lot of gray area with this team. A lot for concern. They are the kings of Midgard. One, you win one, you lose one. You win one, you lose one. So if we use their current recipe, then that means that they're due for a loss against Memphis. Isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, if we going to the regular Pelicans up and down kind of routine that they do, is they win one, they lose one. Now, Coach Al Gentry said it himself, and I don't want to sound redundant here, but he said that it don't matter about back-to-backs of three or four days worth the rest. A good team always comes to play. And look at Golden State. Look at Houston. Look at Cleveland. Look at some of the teams that's in the NBA right now who are playing. Now, they do win, lose some games to teams that they don't supposed to lose to, like a San Antonio did the other night. But the overall, you know that when they come to play, they win the majority of the time when they play their game. But they play their game consistently. That's something that the Pelicans are lacking. And I don't know if to say, because they got the two bigs and they got enough shooters around to make a run, to be better than what they are right now for whatever reason. And I'm thinking it's schematic on the defensive side, which then uh, Urban, who's supposed to be the defensive coordinator of this team, somebody need to look at uh, uh, talking to him or firing him or get him. I don't say fire the man. I don't want the man to lose his job, but I think that he needs to address from a schematic perspective and change whatever they're doing because they run in this zone. Look like it's a two, three zone to me where they kind of rotating around to the shooter. And sometimes they get lost because they're not communicating properly. It just looks like a, it just look like confusion on the defensive end. Ehrman needs to get that corrected. Maybe play more man-to-man. What the hell is wrong with man-to-man? mano e mano. What's wrong with that? Anyway, let's look at, let's preview this game uh, coming up with the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, this one's going to be in the Smoothie King Center. Of course, the Pelicans are now 20-19. and 19. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not in the Smoothie King Center. This one is in Memphis. I'm sorry, I got mixed up on that one. This is supposed to be in Memphis. The uh, Grizzlies are 12 and 27. They're having a tough year. The last five contests, they're on a two game losing streak. They're three and seven the last 10 games. Losers, losers of two in a row. And the Pelicans, of course, are the kings of Midgard. The Pelicans are five and five the last 10 games. The king of 500, as it were. And let's look at some of the statistics here. The Pelicans averaging 111 points a game. That's one of the top five in the NBA. But yet, when you look at other teams that averages that much, that many points, their records are fabulous. I mean, those records, their records are like 25, 26 wins, 27 wins, stuff like that. It's only the Pelicans. And the reason why, if you look like look at the opponent's points they allow, is 110, 111. So you, if you averaging the 111 and giving up 111, that's the perfect mix to be the kings of Midgard. You say? 
49% from the field they shoot. 42, 43 percent. You might as well say 43 rebounds a game, 27 assists per game. That's excellent. Five blocks a game, seven steals a contest. And like I said, they just beat Detroit 112 to 109. They're currently out of 10 games, five and five in the last 10. Kings of Midgard. Looking at the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies averaging barely 99 points a game while giving up 130. Two points a game, you would understand why the team is 12 and 27 and 7 and 13 at home with those statistics. 44 and a half percent shooting the ball from the field. They are average about 40 rebounds a game, about 21 assists a game, about five blocks on the game, about seven steals, seven and a half steals a game. Currently on the two game losing streak, which they had losses against the Clippers and the Wizards. And well, that was a close one against the Wizards. They barely lost that one, 102 to 100 and three of seven in the last uh, 10 games. Now you look at what, Memphis, uh, the, the matchup with Memphis, just looking at some of the statistics. New Orleans is 9-0 nine, nine against Memphis when they score 110 or more points, which is p- pretty much the average. They snapped a seven-game losing streak against Memphis uh, on February of last year, middle February, February 15th, with their last win against the divisional rival coming back on uh, the third uh, uh, March 7th of 2015. Additionally, the win stopped the five game losing streak at the FedEx Farm with the last win in Memphis coming in 2014. And their last, in their first meeting of the season, Andy Davis scored 33 points, 18 rebounds, got a block, while DeMarcus Cudden added 28 points, 10 rebounds, and seven blocks in the game. New Orleans recorded 12 blocks in the first meeting of the season with eight coming in the first quarter. Conley led Memphis with 27 points, five rebounds, three assists, and two steals. Mark the score added 14 points, 11 rebounds, and three blocks. Elvin Gentry is 15 and 19 against this team. He pretty much has a losing record against everybody. And of course, Bernie Bickerstaff is uh, interim coach there. He's three and one against New Orleans. So the last matchup they had against this team was back in October the 18th, and the, they, lo- the, they lost 103 to 91. This time around, can the Pelicans get it done, man? I want to say so, but to be honest with you on this one, I'm going to try something different because when I pick them to win games that they're supposed to win, they lose. So I'm going to go the old Pelican two-step, which they win one, lose one. So they just beat, right? They just beat uh, the uh, Pistons, right? I'll pick them to lose this game against Grizzlies, and we'll see how that works out. So that's the end of the Pelican Post Game Report. Thank you for joining us. Please join our uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our show, like our show, and sign. Uh, also join us on social media as well. So thank you for listening. Peace. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily, here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks cubes and pyramids check out the poshlifestyle.com that's life spelled with a y p-o-s-h-l-y-f-e-s-t-y-l-e.com for all your health needs so get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle clear clean great tasting filtered water we're all thirsty for it but in the u.s alone An estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. 
Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.